Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Today I'm resuming writing my paper on dispensation for dispensationalism class uh, about biblical codism, as I'm calling it. Uh, basically, this paper is due probably on the 12th, maybe the 11th, but it's the 9th today, December 9th. And um, it's been a rough week for me, um, physically tiring at work. Uh, person I was training, you know, that didn't work out well, uh, to help. So the job's all on me. Um, let's see what else psychologically tiring, you know, uh, grievous some because of things I've been dealing with, uh, on online ministry and everything, you know, um, not even going to make reference to those things, but if you want to be a good sleuth, you can look on my YouTube channel around this period of time and see what I've been posting and addressing. Um, but I want to keep the main focus, vision, mission statement for the lame. I mean, the mission statement for the language seminaries, teach Christians how to study and share their Bible with others. That means the formal debates, the debate preparation, the after show, the reviews, all of those things is to gain people's interest so that they will want to study the Bible and share it with others. They see me battle in the uh, in the ring, right? So that they'll come back to the dojo to train, if, if you want to use a metaphor. Not because I'm anything great, but because I believe my doctrine is great and uh, the methodology is great. So um, as I'm... Working on this paper, you know, the, today's a Saturday and, you know, I finally got some good rest last night. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes seminary gets stressful like this if you're working and all that stuff in addition to that. But uh, uh, so I woke up I, I and I cut my paper. As you all know, I think last time you all might have saw it was 30 pages or something. I cut it down to 18 pages and the main way that I cut it down was I had some places in my footnotes where it would say, support this, support this, support this to remind me of what I needed to support. Well, a lot of those support this passages are actually verses that I need to insert. So by taking it out of that, those footnotes out, that reduced it as well. And then there were some other things that I, I took out. And uh, uh, honestly, I thought about recording earlier, but I was, I was, I felt like that, man, what if I start recording and then I don't have anything, you know? I mean, uh, your mind plays tricks on you, right? And so it's like, uh, if I start, uh, it's better I get into it and get a flow of things and then record it so that I can leave y'all with something, you know, that, that that's what I was thinking. Well, regardless of how it is, this is where we are right now. So I think my approach uh, in this particular video is we're going to go all the way down to the bottom, close your eyes, and we're going to work our way backwards. Okay. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to, it's sort of like you reverse engineering things, you know, uh, to try to see what I was saying or how it connects. Uh, are they included in transitional periods or present at all times? I asked that question. They. Okay. Let me pray first. Father God, as we come to you, Lord, uh, um, I ask that you help me in this process and help the audience if they find themselves in similar processes uh, problem solving and writing papers or doing studies or what whatever way this benefits you lord you, uh benefits them lord you know how that is in jesus name we pray amen so are they included in transitional periods or present at all times so this is a question so the question is what is the they right i'm working my way backwards uh, they can occur within a dispensation or in between them. Okay, what is the they? It sounds like I'm talking about codes. Um, when one considers the possible codes, okay, possible codes that exist in the plan of God, one can assess whether these codes are better distinguishers 
of dispensational arrangements. They can occur within a dispensation or between them. Are they included in transitional periods or present at all times? All right, so let's just move this up forward. Let's find a place for it. Close your eyes. None of that's formatted properly. Let's just paste it right here and let's see what we got here. So the intro, the preliminary introduction, the term biblical covenantalism should not replace dispensationalism. Instead, this paper advocates that biblical codism should replace both. Dispensationalists should be open to examine claims of better biblical and systematic theology, but also consider the sine qua non to evaluate whether a view is dispensational, even under another name. Some dispensationalists are dissatisfied with the term, but this dispensationalist is not satisfied with biblical covenantalism either. When one considers, all right, so that's what I just wrote. Then I have four reasons exist for why a new term is needed. The term lacks explanatory power, already in use by non dispensational positions, the need to have a more robust biblical and systematic theology, and the need to practically apply all of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. This includes the possibility of there existing at least 18 codes. All right, so let's see what I should do here. Because there is a section where I, uh, I'm not, I'm thinking I don't want to put this here because there is a part where I explicitly talk about codes. So let me just do a, a search and find where the for word code first occurs. There, there, okay. Biblical codeism, better cut. All right. That's just an assertion. Can I bust both paths? Defining biblical codeism. All right, so it would go in here. A working definition for a code is any explicit and implicit information content given in the context of some form of communication. A biblical code is content God has revealed to convey information about himself and expectations for the recipients of the book. Therefore, biblical codism traces the unfold of this content throughout progressive revelation. All right, so this looks like a good place to put this. When one considers the possible codes that exist in the plan of God, one can assess whether these codes are better distinguishers or dispensation arrangements. They can occur within a dispensation or in between them. Are the are they included in transitional periods or periods or periods of all time? Uh, so they account for they cover. How about that? They cover transitional periods as well. And are present at all times. That's, I'm going to come back to that, but I took it out of question format at least. And uh, that is still really rough, but still, that will help us um, go from there. Close your eyes. Okay. The concept of code can account for all dispensational views of the new covenant because a code may be in process even when a covenant is not. All right, good. That sounds like I'm making the case for biblical codism. That makes sense. Debate occurs within new dispensation about whether the new covenant is the church's current code. Okay, I, I got that. Um... Since the kingdom is viewed as a dispensation and covenants are usually considered to regulate the dispensations, they all flow from understanding dispensationalism sociologically. Uh, I'm not really, that's more of the kingdom stuff. Uh, so let's see this. Covenants are usually considered to regulate the dispensations. Um. Okay, so the sociology begins with defining dispensationalism sociologically. Okay, but where did where do I do that? And the thing about that is, is I'm not really. Am I trying to define dispensationalism 
or am I trying to define dispensationalism as biblical covenant um, co codism and define biblical codism? Um, so I don't know if that's the right term. So 14, this requires a working definition for the word dispensation, which is then used for biblical theology to determine the number of dispensations to exist. Since this paper is not seeking disproves drugs for division. Okay, this is a note for me, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the body of it. Of course, I'll make this all 12 point. All right. 41. Where's 41? I just don't like that the dispensationalism defined sociologically. If I'm arguing, if I'm arguing for biblical codism from the very beginning, I really don't need to define dispensationalism, unless it's in the section of uh, uh, the sine qua nons. So I'm going to go ahead and kill that for now. All right, let's look at this. Acts two dispensationalist identifies when the church began, but does not exclude the progressive view of the kingdom. Other descriptors may be needed for that. Okay, so I'm talking about descriptors here for dispensationalism. Um, when the church began, but does not exclude the progressive dispensationalist view of the kingdom. Other descriptors may be needed for that. Uh, yeah, what I'm saying here is that it's not enough to call myself an Acts 2 dispensationalist because it doesn't exclude that. That's an important idea that maybe could be footnoted or clarified somewhere else. But again... I'm not writing explicitly on dispensationalism. So let's put that down there and keep moving our way up here. Okay. So this is where I'm talking about the different codes that exist. And this is going to be kind of skeletal. All right. The eternal state has a code. Boom. So taking it out of question format. All right. The I'll just make it brief. The MMK has the new covenant as a code. Now I'm aware that phase one and phase two, you know, phase one's on earth, the phase two is the eternal state, but let's go with that. Um See, originally I was going to describe each one of these, but I'm running out of time. And so I'm just going to say the tribulation has a code. Uh, I'm probably just going to list these at some point because it. Uh, I think it does the same thing as what, well, at least what I need to do. So. All right. How does the church have a code? So let's just say the church has a code. Has a code. And I'm going to put related to the new covenant. And we'll talk about that later on. But that's just my note to myself. How does the church have a code? A code. Uh, okay, check this out. This is what I say here. This is interesting. So a code. there's a code at Pentecost. Okay, so uh, related to the New Covenant, there is a code at Pentecost, or is it the New Covenant? I'm, I, uh, you could call it a, a, a Pentecostal. <laughs> yeah, I know how that sounds, guys. The church has a code related to the New Covenant. Um... I'm just going to put that begin at Pentecost to remind my mind about that. All right. Does it introduce more than one code? Okay. That's a good question, but I don't think it's necessary for what we're doing. All right. So now we got a statement about the dispensation of grace. 
At some point between the position stages, refuse to be a curry again, but not offspring were faithful. Okay, now that's a statement actually about the kingdom. Uh, the church began up in God's had it related to the new covenant. Um, I, this is getting away from calling the dispensation of grace, which I'm fine. I don't think that calling it the dispensation of grace and being legalistic. I mean, as Josh has said, you know, in one of my videos, are we really going to split hairs over 50 days? Because from the time of Christ's death to uh 50 days when pentecost began and then the removal of the church um it just seems to make more sense maybe to view uh the church as a separate thing and the tribulation as a separate thing i don't know i i'm still i haven't decided fully on that all right so we got some stuff about the kingdom here and then we got, so we're gonna have to move some stuff around so let's see here. At some point, the sociological distinction between positionally saved and those who refuse to will occur again because not all their offspring will be faithful. All right. So that's talking about the rebellion that's going to happen. Um. So what I need to do at this point is I need to start in certain scripture. And let's use Pentecost. Let's use thy kingdom come. One second, guys. Okay. So Pentecost, it, it he folk it has it's really about the minor prophets. Uh, kingdom program in the prophetic books in 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 light of the biblical cover. Oh, it's not just minor prophets; it's biblical books. Good. So, just so people could see that we're not making this stuff up. I mean, I want you all to know our claims. This is everything that you can know from the Old Testament. All right. The kingdom program in the prophetic book in light of the biblical covenants. I won't mention all these, but I'll give you an idea. The key to program prophetic books in light of the biblical covenants. All right, so here's prophecies concerning spirit uh, concerning Israel. You have ones about the spiritual condition. The prophets described in detail the spiritual condition of the nation that brought about their dispersion, their future discipline, and anticipation of the return of the Messiah. The spiritually blind, deaf, sluggish, disobedient, rebellious, indifferent, sinful, without sacrifices, idolatrous, blasphemous, deceitful, unjust, repudiated God, and forsaken by God. In that sense. Then concerning Israel's dispersion, there's a warning of chastening, the method of Israel's chastening, the chastening of divine judgment for sin, the chastening temporary and duration. Then you have Israel's preservation by divine protection based on mercy, by divine provision, and child's deliverance from her enemies, the preservation based on Israel's covenants, the Abrahamic, Davidic, and Palestinian, which we would say land, especially nowadays, the remnant, the fact of a preserved remnant, the remnant preserved by divine power, the remnant will be small, the remnant is a believing in remnant, the remnant of Assyria, a type of the remnant of the tribulation, the remnant, a witness for Jehovah, the, the remnant will be restored to the land, the covenants will be fulfilled in the remnant, the Abrahamic, the Vedic land, and the new. Israel's restoration to the land, the promise of restoration by divine power, by the Messiah, assisted by the Gentiles, the return from Egypt, the picture of final restoration, the restoration assigned to the Gentiles, the restoration will be permanent, the restoration will fulfill the covenants, Abrahamic, the Vedic, Palestinian, new. The repentance of Israel prior to the millennium, the fact of Israel's repentance, the repentance of Babylonian captivity as a type of the repent at the remnant, Jonah's repentance, a type of the repentance of the remnant, the invitation to repent, the conversion of Israel, the fact of Israel's conversion by divine agency, by cleansing and redemption, by the exercise of mercy, by the exercise of love. Israel made holy and righteous. Israel justified. Israel will glorify God. Israel will be converted by faith. Israel will be given a new heart. Israel will be given a new spirit. Israel will be made obedient. 
The conversion is based on the new covenant. The resurrection of Israel's dead, the fact of the resurrection, the time of the resurrection, the judgment and reward of Israel, the, the future blessing of Israel in the new heaven and the new earth, prophecies concerning the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles, the course of the Gentile powers, the final form of the Gentile world power, the destruction of Gentile power by the Messiah, the judgment of the Gentiles, the blessing on Gentiles in the millennium, their participation in the millennium. The Gentiles will be Israel's servants. The Gentiles in the millennium will have been converted. Okay, The Gentiles in the millennium will be subject to the Messiah, um, the day of the Lord, the tribulation, the nature and character of the period, shaking of the earth, wrath, anger, indignation, fury, judgment, destruction, punishment, vengeance, recompense, trouble, darkness, the time of the tribulation period, the duration within the day of the Lord. Israel in tribulation, the nation preserved, the nation partially regathered in unbelief, the remnant re un the remnant converted, the believers are witness during the period, Gentile power in the tribulation, the alliance among the nations, he said the revived Roman Empire, the king of the north, Assyria, Assyria is a type, king of the east, king of the south, the alliance between Israel and the beast, the invasion of Palestine by the Gentile powers. By the king of the north, the Syrian invasion, a type of the invasion by the king of the north, the protection, the destruction of the Syrian, the invasion of the king of the north, the destruction of the king of the north, by the beasts, by the king of the south, by the kings of the east, the destruction of Jerusalem and Palestine by Gen uh, Gentile powers, the gathering of the nations to Jerusalem to battle for Armageddon, the judgment on Gentile world powers in the millennium. The Messiah in relation to the millennium, the branch, the rod of Jesse, the Lord of hosts, the stone, the king, the judge, the lawgiver, thy God, thy light, the Lord our righteous, the tender plant, the ancient of days, the son of man, Messiah, the prince, the prince of princes, the wall breaker, the Lord, the son of righteous, the redeemer, the most high, the son of God, the servant, the shepherd, Jehovah, the second advent of the Messiah, the fact of the advent. He is coming as redeemer, as judge. He's coming to reward the saints. He's coming as king. He's coming to fulfill the covenant. He's coming to the Mount of Olives, the signs of his coming, the nearness of his coming, Satan bound in the millennium. Separation of sinners from the millennium by judgment. The government in the millennium. Messiah will be king. David will be regent. Judges will be raised up. Nobles and governors will reign under David. There will be a unified government. Position of responsibility will be assigned as rewards. The Messiah will rule with a rod of iron. Jerusalem in the millennium. Jerusalem will be the center of the millennial earth. The safety of Jerusalem. The glory of the millennial Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the center of the kingdom rule. Jerusalem will be the center of worship. The dimensions of Jerusalem in the millennium. The accessibility of Jerusalem in the millennium. The duration of Jerusalem in the millennium. Palestinian in the millennium, the inheritance of Israel, the land will be enlarged, the topography of the land will be altered, productivity will be restored, rainfall will be plentiful, the land will be rebuilt after its decimation, the land will be redivided among the tribes of Israel, Israel in the millennium, Israel will be reunited as a nation, Israel will be related to Jehovah by marriage, Israel will be above the Gentiles. Israel will be made righteous. Israel will be the subject of the king's reign. Israel will be God's witness during the millennium. Israel will be uh, beautified to bring glory to Jehovah. Worship in the millennium. The fact presented. The temple and its worship. The gates and its courts. The temple. The chambers. Separate places. Interior. The chambers before the separate place. The purpose of the separate place. The measuring of the separate place. The throne. The altar. The offerings. The priests. The worship, the place for the preparation of the offerings, the river of the sanctuary, God the object of worship, judgment on sinners in the millennium. The millennium will see the fulfillment of Israel's covenants, the Abrahamic, the Davidic, the Palestinian, the new, conditions in the millennial age, peace, joy, glory, holiness, comfort, no sorrow, justice, knowledge, instruction, the curse removed, uh, plenty, no sickness, healing of the blind and crippled, protection, Freedom from oppression, no immaturity, reproduction by the living peoples, labor, universality of the kingdom, unified language, a fountain open, the manifest presence of God, the Holy Spirit is poured out, the eternity of the millennium. All of that is in the Old Testament, according to Pentecost. So there's the claim. You can get the book, Thy Kingdom Come, 
And you can go look at the appendix and you can study that all out. So you see, the dispensationalist believes that our eschatology is based in the Old Testament, primarily. Okay. All right. So let's get back to the paper. At some point so between those who are positionally saved and those who refuse to will occur again because not all their offspring will be faithful. So what I need to do is I need to focus on the the, uh, the millennium. What's going to happen. Conditions in the millennial age, peace, joy, comfort. Yeah, it doesn't talk about it as much as you need. We need to go to the passages about rod of iron and all that. So let me just type in rod. I think it's like Isaiah. Oh, rod of iron. The Messiah will rule with a rod of iron. Okay. Let's see, 6614. That shall open. Then you will see this and your heart will be glad and your bones will flourish like the new grass. Uh, and the hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but he is ignorant towards his enemies. Uh, something's wrong here. Isaiah 66, 14. Okay. Judging, judgment. Hmm. Maybe I have to pull our Rari for this. Um. I mean, we know that there's a rebellion for Revelation. Maybe I just use that passage. Let's go to that passage. That's tree life. Okay. So look, guys. When a thousand years are complete, Satan will be released from prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. See, this is good, but this is not the one we want. Uh, because we want to talk about how God's going to discipline the, the children. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Rod, Rod. I may have to go to Google for this. Right? The Rod of Iron passage? Yeah. All right. We'll go. The Google's faster. Because I'm slower. I know it's in Revelation 12, but I want the Old Testament. Let's see how good Google is. I didn't even type in a Bible reference. I just wrote rod of iron. Well, maybe Google's not good. It's needing to update. Looks like help about Google Chrome. Checking for updates. Take it forever. Ah, see, look, guys, it needed to be updated. All right. It's in the day, so I know that you're up waiting. We're waiting for Chrome to be updated. What could I say about this? I'm not sedated because I can't say that this paper's going to be belated. I'm waiting it to get to a high percent, and I'm wondering where it went. I've been sitting here for a stint. It's already up to 66. Hopefully it gets this quick and we can get up to 100 and then we can start running. 
We got to get to the goal. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble, going to feel it in our soul as it reverberates. And you know, you heard the fate when they say that it's the due date that you got to meet. So you got to be there on your feet to get there to the finish line. Uh, and then you feel like you got a diminished mind because no matter what you do, it's not a good enough proof. You go through and give it a review. You try to see that everything is true. You try to get the spell corrected, but you think that you still reckon. But will they accept it? There's too much red to be corrected. And you go through with the grammar, Lee, and you know what it hands to me, a bunch of different results. It's got more red on the paper than a cult. That means that people are caught up in some crazy stuff and it looks like this thing ain't taking enough. It should be stopping, but it's frozen at 66, like the amount of books in the Bible. So you know what that means? I'm not going to talk about it. That would be libel. I'm going to stop right now because it's not going to do it while Zoom is in competition with it. All right. All right. Rod of Iron Ministries, Rod of Iron, Old Testament. Passage. Revelation 227, Psalms 27. Okay. Mm, all right. Let's see. Discipline people. Chastising. Mm. I'm not doing very good, guys. All right. I remember the word chastise came up earlier. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it this way. Rod of iron. The Messiah will rule with a rod of iron. But yeah, but whenever I click on those verses, it's not going to the right place. Okay, chastise. See, this is why I didn't want to do a video because I, I don't have nothing to offer. I'm just striking out. All right, chastise. All right. Dang it. This just shows I don't know my Bible the way I um should. Okay. We'll just go to Isaiah. 65, I think it is. Y'all are probably yelling at me right now. Like, you don't know where this is. You're pathetic. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. No. Isaiah 49.2. No. Okay. Young man. That's the word I'm going to look for. Um, no. I'm really looking bad right now, guys. Okay, so. It's the passage. I think it's 65. Um, okay. No longer will be an infant who lives a few days or an old man who does not live out his days. For the young will die at the age of 100. All right, so that seems to be and one who does not reach that age would be thought a curse. So it kind of kind of implies that he'll be disciplined. So Isaiah 65, 20. Let's go ahead. Uh, those who refuse to occur again because not all their offspring will be faithful. Um, Isaiah 
6520. And then I go ahead and give the revelation passage. Revelations. It's not revelations. Why did we say that? Revelations. They release Revelation seven. Um, deceiving the nations. Revelations twenty seven through eight. Well, the whole thing is seven through ten. I guess I could say Revelations. Is it twenty? Yeah, seven through ten. Okay, for those that don't know, typically abbreviated like that, your verse that that will usually ride. All right, so let's back up here. So this is about the kingdom. And so at some point, so it's between those who are positionally saved and those who refuse to be will occur again because not all their offspring will be faithful. <gasps> the, yeah, and I could have said believe, but I put faithful there. So not all of them will be saved. And that could be the implication. At the beginning of the Messianic Kingdom, it will be composed of only those who are positionally saved. All right. So I need a verse for that. All right. So we go back to this. And we go back to the appendix. And. We look up the word regenerated. He doesn't use the word regenerated. Um, tribulation. Okay, Israel gathered in unbelief. All right, so I guess the way that I'll do this is I'll say it'll compose of those who are positionally saved. Uh, so I will relate that to Romans 11. When it says all Israel would be saved. Or let me think about this. Maybe what I do is I'll go from Matthew 23. And it says, let's see, um, call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, how I wanted to gather you, but you wouldn't let me. Therefore, your house is left to you desolate. The way when you were unwilling. Behold, your house has left you desolate, for I say to you, for now on you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. All right, and as you see, okay, so Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 39. Okay. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's link it with Romans 10, 9. All right. 10, 9. And let's go ahead and connect it with Romans 11.
where it says all Israel shall be saved, which is an Old Testament passage as well. Um, Twenty six. All right, so eleven twenty six. Eleven twenty six. Okay, and then let's go with uh, Revelations twelve. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which poured on it. Um, hmm. Actually, that passage, the one we were just at, Romans 11, it said the deliverer will come from Zion. Um... So we can actually use that one. Let me make sure I got the whole thing. Yeah, and we're moving garlic Sir Jacob. Yes, okay, that's fine. We don't need to tie it to the Revelation passage. All right. Except for those who were too young to be saved in the tribulation. Um, we'll compose with only those who are positionally saved. All right, so now we got to relate this to uh, at the beginning, it would be composed of only those who are positionally saved because of the judgment of the goat and the sheep. Uh, because of the judgment of the because of the judgment separating goats and sheep. Okay, so so positionally saved part, I will go. I'm gonna go and put. Uh, hmm. Well, I can move these verses and plug them in somewhere else. The call on the name of the Lord. I I guess it works. I guess it works. Um, but I'm going to have to separate it out. So I have to put positionally saved here. Because separation of goat and the sheep. And then I need to give that verse. Which is Matthew 25. Hmm. So Matthew twenty five thirty one. So this is all about this. Matthew twenty five thirty one through uh thirty one through forty six. Too young to be saved in the tribulation. I think I'm gonna put this as a foot as uh down there with the footnote because I don't know if that's a solid argument. So I need to qualify this. I'll put it down here. I'm kind of feeling lightheaded, guys. All right, so at the beginning of millennium, all right, the the reign of Messiah regulate all unglorified humans. Okay, so there's going to be people that are able to procreate. We know that because there's going to be passages that talk about them having children. Um, 
reproduction, R-E-P-R-O. Reproduction by the living peoples. We just need one. For I redeem, they will be as numerous as ever before. And so they should be a lot of inheritance of you among the tribes of Israel. But declares the Lord, going to give you. Reading for, let's see. Let's go with Zechariah 10 8. One second. All right. So let's see here. Okay. Of the these unglorified humans, the theocracy of Israel will exist along with other national and ethnic distinctions. Uh, we'll just use Zechariah 14 for that. Wait a second, let me look that up. All right, Zechariah 14, where it talks about Egypt. That's a national, not necessarily ethnic, but it's good enough for this paper. I could find ethnic stuff later. Egypt. Yeah. All right. And it'll be there with all right. So let's see here. Zechariah fourteen sixteen. Fourteen sixteen. Went to Egypt does not it won't rain on their city. And 19. Okay. Turn off my phone. So it make those noises. All right. So, all members of body Christ will have glorified bodies, right? We can use Philippians. 321 for that? I think so. Let's see here. That was not where I was going. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. From which. <laughs> that is so interesting. <laughs> he doesn't view us on the 10th floor around. He views us from heaven, from which. So interesting. We will transform the body of the humble state into a conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of power subjected all things to himself. Philippians 3.21. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Mr. Christ will have glorified bodies. Mm, however, the distinction between Israel and the church will be more evident in the Messianic and Millennial Kingdom uh, for the following reasons do that for the following reasons. All members of the body of Christ are glorified bodies. Yeah, so basically it's going to be similar to the transfiguration. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm getting lazy, guys. I get tired. During the tribulation, some code would be in operation. All right, so this is 
Uh, so this is going to go with the Millennial Kingdom. All of this. I think. Well, I it, not really because it, it um guys, I'm messing up. I'm gonna land the plane for right now. But uh anyway, if you've been blessed by this, subscribe. Keep this ministry in prayer, keep me in prayer as I'm working on this paper and in other areas, you know. Um I get weary in, in spiritual warfare and uh I've been taking on a lot. But uh um yeah. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell for notifications share this with others and uh if you want to donate if you feel like that god's blessed you through the ministry you can do so with the paypal link underneath most videos in the about section god bless